This meeting is being recorded. Um, and welcome everyone back. Thank you for staying for um, the second part of our session this afternoon. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lindsay. I'm, I'm one of the co-chairs for HLG. Um, and just before I, I introduce Sharon, I just thought I'd give a bit of a background as to why we've, we've done this meeting this afternoon. So, um, as some of you hopefully know already, um, HOG is turning 75 this year. Um, and as well as looking back at what we've done over the years, um, we're also thinking strategically about where we go um, in our future. Um, in the past, I think um, we've gone through a few different name changes, but in the past, I think maybe social care was something that was more explicit um, and something that we covered, but maybe nowadays as HLG, um, although this, the, the social care part is there, it's not actually in our name. So I think we're quite keen to make sure that we are health and social care libraries group um, and that the services that we provide are um, useful and um, inclusive for everyone working in the sector across sort of health, social care and and other health health adjacent um, um, organisations. So um, hopefully this session this afternoon is a bit of a starting point um, as we move into the, the new Health and Care Act coming, coming into um, fruition and people starting to work more to, closely together, um, NHS and charities um, and voluntary organisations. Um, we really want to look and see um, what that landscape looks like and how how we can support you really. Um, so um, Sharon's going to speak to us in a second about her experiences of moving from health to social care, um, what's different, how it's changed um, and what that landscape looks like at the moment. Um, and then hopefully at the end we'll have a bit of time to have a bit of discussion um, and just see what other people's experiences are. Um, and as I say, hopefully look at how um, health libraries group can can move to support that that sector. Um, so with that brief introduction, I'm very pleased to to welcome Sharon Stevens um, to the call this afternoon and um, to thank you for your time to coming along to speak to us. And um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you for inviting me um, to speak um, today. So hopefully, people can. Kind of, um, Sort of pick up on things that I've learnt uh, moving from health to social care in the presentation today, just to kind of give you very much of, of a headline um, and sort of you know, some of the key things that I've kind of um, learnt from kind of moving and the different roles that I've had. So if I and now my slides won't work, oh, there you go. right? Okay. So a bit of an overview. So these slides um, I have shared with Lindsay, so I think they will be available um, uh, um, afterwards as well. So today I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of Social Care Institute for Excellence, so Sky, um, and my, my role at Sky, and then give you a brief background to my career um, and sort of how I, different roles that I've had. Um, and then kind of reflect on some of the key learning points that I've had that, um, since moving into the um, social care sector. And I've also included um, an appendix, um, just very brief um, of some kind of key readings and some websites um, that you might find useful, sort of um, just to kind of start you off in terms of thinking about social care and some of the background that you might need. Some of them you might already know, and that's fine, but just want to sort of to, um, give you an idea of some of the things that I've um, found useful. So I haven't timed my um, presentation, so I might go over a little bit, but I will try not to go over 20 minutes. So a little bit of background about um, Sky. Um, we were established in 2001, um, originally um, by a grant um, completely funded by the Department of um, Health, which is now DHSC. Um, and I think a lot of people, the impression I have is that people were very much thought of as a government funded agency, more of a sort of, you know, a government kind of body. Um, that isn't really the case now. We've moved very much into a sort of consultancy um, approach. We provide um, training, um, e-learning um, to the sector. We provide you know, research and um, projects, safeguarding reviews. Um, 
and working with local authorities um, around improvement um, practices. And we work with um, the Department of Health and Social Care, organisations like Social Care Wales um, and local government. We are actually quite a small organisation. We're about 40 um, um, people at the moment. And I think a lot of people seem to think we are, we are actually a really big organisation and we're not, we are sort of, um, you know, quite, quite small um, numbers. In terms of um, my role um, within Sky, so I um, joined Sky in July 2021, so I've been um, here for less than a year, um, and my role really is to sort of lead the evidence work. Um, so that includes things like desk reviews, um, evidence reviews, um, either to support any particular projects um, or a standalone pieces of work. So to give you um, some examples, um, since I've joined Sky, I've worked on a evidence review for the Department of Health and Social Care on sexual incidents within care homes. Um, I've also done some work around co-production um, and the evidence around um, co-production um, and also done something else around um, the Liberty Protection Safeguards and Mental Capacity um, Act. So it's quite um, varied in terms of, you know, the work around evidence um, that we do and so it's very much um, summarising um, evidence and not just doing some searches. Um, we also um, support the delivery um, of social care online which is probably the resource that most people associate with Sky um, within libraries. So for those of you who don't know social care online is a resource um, aimed at the social care workforce um, to provide access to research and originally it was it was took over I think about in 2005 um, by Sky um, and it sort of developed into sort of quite a, a large resource um, at the moment um, but it is very much geared and aimed at sort of social care workforce um, so people in practice um, and that's sort of one of the main things as well um, that we're doing um, at Sky and that, that I lead on. My role sits within the research and information and policy team. Um, so that's sort of where sort of I sit sort of within, uh, within the organisation. So that's sort of a bit of background um, to Sky. In terms of my career background, so prior to joining Sky, I've pretty much spent the majority of my career sort of within the NHS or university libraries, mainly supporting um, health um, topics. So um, I spent some time for the working for the National um, Electronic Library for Health, the specialist collections. Um, so I was a project manager um, for those and I worked with the stroke and vascular, the project um, led those. Um, I also worked at the West Midlands Health Authority. Originally, when I joined, it was the um, Workforce Deanery. It then became the Health Authority, and I think it's now Health Education England. Um, so and while I was there, I was there for five years, and I had about three different job titles. Um, so that's sort of originally kind of, I started off very much in NHS libraries. I've also spent um, a couple of years in Canada. Um, I worked for nearly two years as a reference librarian um, at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. And again, there I was supporting um, pharmacy and dentistry and population and public health. Um, and that was very much a merged service. So we were also supporting the hospital libraries as well. So I would go and work in the hospital libraries. Um, I was teaching. Um, working on systematic reviews and doing researches as well for some um, systematic review projects. But again, it was very much sort of within health, um, health um, areas. I also spent um, three years as a evidence analyst, um, producing evidence reviews in NHS commissioning. So that was very much um, kind of summarising evidence to support management decisions um, Within, within the NHS, so some of it was around the workforce, um, others was around um, kind of obesity strategies. Um, so very much a bit mixed, um, mixed approach uh, as an evidence analyst. Um, 
And I've also kind of worked at various universities, sort of in subject research support librarian roles, um, you know, maternity contracts when you first start um, into libraries, but generally always um, supporting health and sort of social science subjects. Um, though in saying that, the previous role that I came had before Sky, um, I had supported law and business. Um, for a couple of years and that was probably the first time since I'd started in libraries where I hadn't actually supported health um, subjects um, so I spent three years supporting business and law and that's probably the first time in my career that I hadn't supported sort of um, health subjects. I've, so generally I've always sort of um, supported um, NHS and university libraries um, and then I kind of came to Sky and moved to social care and I had you know, done some kind of um, some social care topics. I always tended to do sort of, when I was a evidence analyst, I'd always tended to do things like mental health topics, you know, learning disability, evidence, you know, most particular um, groups. So I had some kind of um, knowledge um, of social care, or so, or so I thought. So in terms of my reflections and sort of what I've learned, what I'm still learning um, about social care is first of all the terminology. So in moving into social care, you you basically have to learn um, all of these different terms. So the Care Act, co-production, um, and some of these might be you know familiar um, to you. So if there's anyone in mental health, um, you know liberty, protection, safeguards, the Mental Capacity Act probably you know, might be familiar with that. Um, so I've had to sort of learn all of this terminology and do your background reading. And it sort of reminded me of when I first joined the NHS. So when I first joined the NHS, I sort of had to learn all of this terminology. I mean, back then I think it was the NHS plan. Um, so there was a lot of kind of you know, reading um, around that um, and things like your guidelines and NICE and so, you know, it was a very big jump sort of moving into sort of, um, the NHS and it has been that kind of similar jump. What I would say is that it's been a bigger learning curve for me moving into social care than when I worked in Canada. So when I sort of went over to Canada and sort of had to um, and work there, it's actually been a bigger jump and also a bigger jump than when I was supporting um, business and law. And there are a couple of reasons why I say that. So when I was supporting um, business at sort of, you know, BC at my, at my last role, I'd already done, you know, some business and management topics because I'd been in NHS commissioning. So I'd already, was, you know, familiar um, with some of the, you know, the management um, topics and approaches. Um, and I'd also worked in university libraries. So a lot of, you know, the university libraries you're doing inductions and, you know, libraries sort of can work very similar ways um, and in Canada it was very much you know PICO is PICO so I was doing a lot of teaching um, I already knew about guidelines and you know your evidence triangle and levels of evidence and, and you know supporting pharmacy so you know it was very very similar um, so there wasn't that much difference. I mean, there were differences in terms of, you know, how they organise their courses, obviously, and you know, different organisations, but it wasn't a really big jump professionally for me. Um, finding washing up liquid is another story, but, you know, so, but the terminology in social care is very, you know, there has been a very big jump. And I've sort of found that I've really had to sort of, you know, learn a lot of my co-production and co care act. Um, and we really sort of learn that um, sort of so that you can know sort of where people are. So that has been sort of um, a, a big jump um, for me. And one of the reasons why I've included those, those links to some key sources, because I think it is important to get that background knowledge to social care. And there are crossovers with, with, with health, but it is a very sort of unique um, sector um, with particular challenges and particular approaches um, and I think it is different to sort of particularly the NHS um, in that. So the other thing that I've 
learn, and that's linked to terminology and how the sector is different, is around the workforce. Now, one of the things I wanted to kind of highlight is that I, mean, I was at a webinar recently, um, and they were talking about the kind of the future of health and care. Um, and someone mentioned, you know, one of the speakers said about the health and care workforce. And I thought, well, you can't really talk about the health and care workforce in the same sentence because they are very um, different. So, and also the social care workforce is, is very fragmented compared to say health and particularly the NHS um, workforce, you know, NHS, got, you know, um, there's a gender for change, there's been a lot of investment. Um, obviously, there are challenges um, around the workforce and you know, retaining workforce and vacancies. But when we're talking about the social care workforce, they are a real mixture. So, you know, you've got some um, so care workers make up the majority um, of the workforce. Some of those can be, you know, working for a local authority. Some can be in you know, a small care home. Um, so, so it's a real range of who their employer is. Um, and I think because of that, they have got a very different approach to evidence and what is valued um, as evidence. And there's a real um, importance of those with lived experience um, in terms of social care and co-production. And they did sort of um, remind me of when I first went into commissioning um, and sort of doing, you know, evidence reviews in terms of their approach to evidence. So, you know, you're, you, well, certainly I was used when I'm supporting things like, you know, pharmacy and dentistry around, you know, RCT, systematic reviews and the, the levels of evidence. That isn't sort of, um, that isn't going to be the same in social care. You know, the importance of qualitative and case studies are really important um, in social care in terms of the evidence base. Um, and that was very similar to management. So when I worked in commissioning, you know, they were always about, oh, I want, I want to see case studies. And your initial training is, oh, but, you know, I can't really say that's good practice. There's no sort of you know, systematic review or, or RCT. And it's just because it's a different... Um, different area, um, different topic, and they've got a different approach. Um, and I think that's very much about the workforce is that they have a different approach to evidence um, and they might not be as comfortable um, using evidence because they haven't really had that kind of investment in training um, at, at the moment. Um, so that you know, hopefully will change, but they are very fragmented um, as a workforce. I also think the other key difference, particularly, and they said this is linked to the fragmented workforce, is the social care evidence base. And I think anybody who has um, ever tried to do a search for um, social care um, will, will kind of come up against this. There is, you know, there has been traditionally a lack of research funding for social care. Um, so therefore we have a much smaller um, evidence base that I mean, that is changing. Um, and there has been a growth in publication rates around social care, particularly where there's a crossover um, between health, um, but it is far more um, limited. And there are difficulties around access to social care um, journals. Um, so I think because of that, there is sort of um, a need for summaries of evidence and making evidence accessible. So when I've sort of reflected on this around similarities with other kind of groups and subject areas, it did um, remind me of when I first came into libraries um, and I was working on the desk and we supported so groups like nurses and occupational health. And I can remember having a lot of kind of OT students come to the desk saying, I can't find anything um, on my topic, but everything's in you know, physio um, and not, not because they had quite small evidence base um, at the time. And I think there are similarities with other um, areas where you know, you've got these gaps, and but there's just a lot more gaps um, in social care. And you have to be a little bit more sort of creative um, in sort of how you approach um, searches. 
because of the difficulties around access to social care and maybe because they've had not had that investment in their training and lack of time, there is a need for summaries of evidence. So we did um, a survey around um, evidence needs and use of information um, to the sector. And one of the big things that came out of that was they want, you know, summaries of evidence, summaries of grey literature, um, and they want a kind of very brief um, and key points, even though they might be in some, some are interested in gaining access to social care journals, many just wanted the summary um, because of, you know, obviously it's similar to NHS in terms of, you know, people, you know, haven't got much time um, and, and anything you can do to sort of highlight key points um, or you know, current awareness is going to be, you know, something that's really um, relevant. Um, to them. And I think this is the one that is probably, um, in terms of the evidence base, the most challenging on a, on a day to day level um, for me when I'm sort of producing um, evidence reviews or doing desk reviews or trying to find any, um, any research um, or, or grey lit um, for them because it's, there are real um, challenges. Um, I was doing something recently on the Mental Capacity Act. Um, and a lot of the research was, you know, on when it was first introduced and there hasn't been anything recent. And you often find that you have this little flurry and um, then there's nothing. Um, so my, the biggest day-to-day -day challenge at the moment for me is this lack of evidence um, base um, for social care. Um, not just in sort of systematic reviews, but just, you know, in case studies or any kind of um, research, there are real um, gaps and lack of funding um, social care and research so if I go so I just thought I would just keep to sort of some key reflections I think since moving into social care you know there are real differences to healthcare um, but there is crossover um, and I think I've been able to sort of build on the knowledge that I already have from other areas working in health when I've done mental health um, when I've done management and I've been able to build on that but there are still I'm still experiencing a big learning curve um, because you know, you're always coming up against a new area where you're like oh this is this is a new, completely new topic um, for me and still having to sort of do that background reading and spend that time to you know, become familiar with the topic and I think that's like anything when you're sort of working on a new area um, you'll find that in saying that you know I think there are opportunities to learn from each other and share good practice and I do think you know I'm kind of coming here saying this is what I've learned but I I still learn things from um, health librarians and from the NHS librarians and health education England particularly around you know I think um, health libraries in particular are probably far more ahead in terms of measuring impact and determining the impact of you know, library and knowledge services. Um, I think you're probably far more forward around knowledge mobilization um, and having that and dissemination um, than sort of social care um, are at the moment. So I do think there are some real good opportunities to learn um, from each other um, as well as you know, some sharing good, um, good practice. I will finish um, on that. So the appendix is I've included um, in, in the slides. And if I just go, you can just see, these are some very key, um, key links. They, it's not a comprehensive um, list at all. I would say that the white paper, which is the people at the heart of care, which was published in December of last year, um, is probably where I would start. So this is very much the kind of the vision um, for the next 10 years um, around um, social care um, and there's also sort of some other links there um, as well that people might hopefully find, um, find useful. Um, I think I'm just about on time so that is the end of my presentation. I'm going to stop sharing. I don't know if people Lindsay, if you want to do questions, if there are any comments. Yeah, I think that, thanks very much for that, Sharon. It's, that's a really useful overview and, um, you know, 
chimes with me in a lot of the stuff that we do in um, in our organisation. Um, does anyone have any questions for Sharon? Um, Alison? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, I'm having mouse issues. It's going not where I wanted it to go. Um, sorry about that. Um, I just wondered if that was a new role that you started in um, was it July 2021, um, or was it a vacancy? Because I wondered if it's a new, brand new role, what they had before. So they had, they did have a, um, a senior information specialist in post a few years ago. Um, and what happened is that they, some people had left, um, they had did a bit of a restructure and then they recruited for the role again. So it was previously sort of in the team, um, but because of a restructure, they got rid of it. And then they decided, oh, actually we need a senior information specialist. Um, so it is, it's new, but it, they have had it um, before. And I think part of the reason they, decided to re-recruit is I think they realised the importance of evidence um, and information. Um, and since certainly since I've got here, I've had conversations around you know, different types of evidence reviews and what they mean. And similarly, you should turn like, oh, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Um, so I think they've sort of re-evaluating um, the role um, very much so, because originally, um, the team, the information specialists were very much focused on social care online and we really developed to do support desk reviews as well um, and evidence reviews. Um, so it sort of is a kind of a dual, a dual role, but yeah, so it is, it is new, but it was in, in the structure before a few years ago. Thank you. Um, this more of a question from me, Sharon. Do do you yeah. feel that your um has has your user your and your service users changed in the in since you started? Is it as it are you seeing a shift as to who's asking you for for information? Um, no, I mean I think we get a mix in terms of evidence reviews. It's um. There's been a big push to try and get an evidence review or a desk review in the majority of projects that we do. Um, so even though it might not be published, um, it will be sort of, you know, so to support the project. So I did read something recently around health inequalities and learning disabilities. And that was um, just a kind of desk review um, to support the researchers going out to sort of do, do the um, qualitative research. So, and I've been asked by practice development, our practice development team, who go out and work with local authorities um, to, to do improvement. Um, and I got asked to do, or could you do a bit of a desk review on co-production um, and impact of co-production? Um, so I think we're probably, we're probably expanding. It used to be very much, before I came, it was you know, just you know, the proper research projects. And now we're sort of being asked more to do around, you know, desk reviews or practice improvement and more kind of um, both those teams. Um, and also it's not always just, you know, a document. A lot of the times we're wanting, can you do with some slides and not necessarily, you know, a long, you know, 20 page, 30 page evidence review um, or record review. It's, you know, um, can you do with some summary slides on the topic and can you present it as well so we're kind of doing really um, that's one of my aims for this year um is to actually look at the different types of reviews and evidence work and how we present it and we're probably looking more at developing things like podcasts presentations um as well as sort of you know your traditional you know, 30 page review because we keep getting feedback that Oh, you know, can you do me a summary of a 30 page review? Um, I'm going to do it less than 10 pages because people just want the key key points. Um, very much so, yeah. Yeah, it just comes back to where there's gap in information available. I think 
um, yeah. feeds into this, there's some questions coming through that I think feed into that. So um, Anna's asked, um, what would you say are the key databases and sources for social care literature beyond social care online? So, I mean, I think I found a lot of the things I've done so far have been around learning disabilities, uh, mental health. So obviously, PsycInfo um, is really useful for that. Um, I think Medline actually is still, I mean, I did um, an analysis of the journals that we have in social care online that we index and about, you know, 80, 85% are actually covered by the NHS um, core, current core content. So Medline um, has, has, has the key journals for social care um, um, and CINAHL, but I, I tend to always search Medline and PsycInfo if I'm doing learning, learning disabilities. Um, and the other good database that I do know that we don't have in NHS England is ASIA. Um, so I think if you're at university libraries, you might have access to that. But ASIA is also a very good um, database. It has a good um, coverage um, um, of journals um, for social care. Um, but you know, there's there's always a challenge with social care because they often don't publish. Um, so I do think you know Google Scholar, um, and you know you've got some key key authors and just doing cited reference searches. That that's actually a really um, useful um, technique as well. Um, to sort of find resources. That's brilliant, thank you. Um, there's another comment from Yvonne who says, um, well, firstly, it's very interesting and thank you to you, um, but also just saying that at the moment, we're not sure how um, how things will fit in with the new ICSs and, and what, what the landscape will look like, which I think is, is something we'll, we'll discuss yeah. a little bit um, in a second. Um, but just, just before we move on to that, there's a question from Alison on, on how many people are in your team. Okay, so originally when I joined, it was just me and another information specialist. Um, and we do have um, a part-time associate who we get in um, as well. That um, information specialist has actually is leaving, leaving um, after seven years um, with Sky. So I will be just one um, at the moment. Um, but there should be... Um, another information specialist and it is something that is under review um, because obviously we're having increasing demand um, on us um, so we're having to rely on you know contract associates which is not kind of a long-term solution at the moment so yeah brilliant thank you um, does anyone else have any questions for Sharon Um, so from Annette in Scotland, she says, um, we find social care staff do not have access to LKS and the skills of librarians, so are not in the habit of thinking about research and evidence. Any, any hints about how to encourage them to make a case for use of evidence? So, so yeah, so this is the thing that is, um, I'm doing um, at the moment. And I think um, it, it is a real um, difficult one um, in terms of getting the, it is a, I think it's part of the tradition um, around evidence. Um, and I think it is just since I've been here at, at Sky, you sort of just keep chipping away a little bit like water torture, water torture. That's the only way I can um, describe it. And also to make evidence more, to try and make it more accessible. Um, so, you know, I've done something recently like the mental capacity work that I, I mentioned and what we, what I did. Well, I didn't just summarise it. I pulled out, you know, tips for your practice to, to try and make it accessible um, as you can um, and to try and put it into a language that is not sort of a very formal academic language. And simple things like, like we didn't put the methods at the start of the review, we put it in the appendix because when they're practitioners, um, they don't necessarily want to start off reading the whole you know, pages of the your methodology they want they, they'll they trust you that you've done it in a you know, robust manner um, and put the um, methodology in the appendix so there are lots of different ways that you can kind of 
think about okay when I'm like interested in evidence it's often because it's not necessarily presented to them or they don't find it useful but can we pick out ways of trying to make it more accessible um, so we've been asked to do blog posts um, recently um, on some evidence and some kind of research and just summar summarizing it in a kind of informal way for them so it is a challenge in terms of your own um, skill base because you're not just um, searching you're actually reading and summarizing um, but it is something that we've been you know, requested um, and asked to do um, but that has been I think that's the biggest challenge around the social care workforce is to sort of make evidence accessible. We ask something around what forms of evidence they find useful and systematic reviews were not on the list, not in their top um, priority. They found them really unhelpful. And you can understand why, because if you're in practice, um, you know, the conclusion of a lot of systematic reviews is we need more research. But when you're in practice, that's not necessarily what, you know, what you want. So you want something to say, well, how can I use that? Um, so that's what we're, kind of, what we're trying to think about is actually how do we present you know, this research to say what they can, how they can use it. Um, even if it's only to think about, reflect on the questions that they need to ask themselves in terms of, in terms of practice um, and not just present, you know, a systematic review found about, you know, 2000 studies only looked at 20 and concluded that there's more research needed. It's kind of, it's how you present it, um, very much so, I think. But it is still a learning curve for us as well. I think that's really helpful. It's just a, a different way of looking at how we present the information, I think, as well as searching for it then. Yeah. Um, that's great. I think, um, yeah, and then it says thank you for that as well. I think um, if there's no more questions for now, um, should we move on to, to having a bit of discussion about this? Thank you so much for that, Sharon. It's been it, it's really um, really useful to hear how things are with you. <laughs> um, so for this this next part, um, what I thought we would do um, is I have three sort of very broad questions for you to consider in your groups, um, which I'll put in the chat so you've got them going in. But really, um, just wanted to think about what your experiences are of, of providing information um, with social care and beyond, um, what barriers there are um, to that support. Um, and as I said at the start, really, what, what could, could us, um, HOD as a, as, a, as a group, do to, to help with that? Um, I'm going to attempt to put you all in two breakout rooms. Um, when you go in, if you can nominate someone to feedback um, on your discussion. Um, I, I always go into these and forget to do that bit, so I'll say it at the start just to make sure so someone can feedback. Um, and if we say we have 15 minutes, if we come back at 10 to 2 and just maybe share some of the things that we've been talking about in our group. Um, hopefully that, that sounds straightforward to everyone. Um, and let me just put the questions in the chat. Uh, so, so hopefully everybody can see them there. And I will try and put everybody into rooms. Everybody will magically go into the rooms in a second.
is being recorded. recorded. Okay, I think. Oh no, there's still one room. <laughs> okay, brilliant. I think everybody's back now. Um, welcome back, everyone. Um, I, I hope that was useful. Um, and people had some good conversations. Um. I think I'll, I'll I'll just go around the rooms in order, and and if people want to feedback, um, I'm just realising that I've realised I'll I'll not start with me. Um, if we go to room two first, um, who was feeding back for that room? That was um Sharon in, in Rana's room. I can I can say I don't think we decided, but I'll say a few bits <laughs> if you like. Um, we we're talking about kind of who 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 in the kind of um. Uh, you know, social care uh, workforce might use the services, you know, in terms of the actual job roles, if you like. Um, Imran and myself had limited experience. <laughs> so we were, you know, talking to Sharon about it really. And, you know, we talk about care home managers, social workers, reg people with registered professionals. So people like occupational health. Um, well, then we were talking a little bit about uh the difficulties in terms of like the approach, because Sharon was talking earlier about the importance of sort of lived experience and the value of that uh, in terms of as a research uh, method, as opposed to things like you know, things that, you know, in healthcare we might be used to like RCTs and so on. And, and we just started talking about how when in an ICS perspective, we might have people coming together from a sort of more traditional healthcare, uh, you know, hospital background working with people who are working with this more patient experience and, and, and patient lived experience perspective whether there may be some something of a clash <laughs> a clash of ide ideologies as it were coming together um, and uh, and then Sharon was talking about the importance of, of what we would probably call the reference interview in the past of, of being clear about what people in social care are actually wanting you know what are they wanting a, a sort of a, a full review or sort of more of a, a sort of executive summary type um, briefing approach uh, i think chip in though if i've missed anything in rana and sharon i think that was what i jotted down no i think that's a good summary i've just realized that we probably didn't get onto the last question about um, HRG because there were only three of us in the room so <laughs> we didn't get onto the, onto the last one about what how HRG can um, help uh, yeah support we didn't get onto that that question I'm afraid that, that's all right maybe we can then um, come together as a group and talk about that in a second um uh, can we move on to the next group which was room three um I'll Leslie. do that I'll do yeah. that um uh, Lindsay, so so in our group, um, we 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 looked at all three three questions. Um, so a bit like uh, Don was saying, we we didn't have any kind of specific experience um, in terms of um, providing um, support to people working in social care. Although we sometimes get questions that have got a sort of social care bent to them, um, 
uh, depending on the trust trust you work in, that may be. Um, so some people maybe have had questions from palliative care teams who are working out in the community and are obviously um, involved in, in wider teams. Um, some people serve CCGs, that kind of thing. So they spend a lot of time searching grey literature, looking for case studies, that kind of thing. Um, similarly, um, myself and, and a, another member of the group working in a mental health trust or a community trust, obviously there's more um, staff who work in, in, in that kind of, of area, um, but, but nothing sort of specific. Um, in terms of the barriers, um, we were talking about really simple practical things like, you know, how do people gain access to buildings? Um, you know, because a lot of places are protected by swipe cards and that kind of thing. Um, but also access in terms of databases and so on regarding having access to things like uh, Sharon mentioned ASIA that we don't currently have access to. Um, so, so funding, where do we, do we get extra funding for this kind of service if our remit's expanding? Um, things about licenses for products that we have and whether they're whether we're able to um, share things as, as part of a license. Um, and similarly with, with our book, book stock as well, whether we've got appropriate um, book stock. Um, and from that, we kind of naturally moved on to, to what HLG could do to help in terms of, um, you know, providing the kind of things that, that Sharon's talked about today, really, ideas of how you can present results to people in a way that's accessible to them, um, how we could provide training on um, how to support people working in social care best, awareness raising, so in more detail than, than Sharon provided. Um, we were talking about the idea of, um, you know, writing blogs and doing podcasts and things like that that people may not be used to doing. Um, but also that it's good to understand that uh, wider skills are transferable, um, which is reassuring as well. But also we had an interesting idea um, around getting the kind of um, position statement, either from HRD or what we were talking about just before we came out of the meet, the, the room was um, a joint position statement between ourselves, HE, and, and maybe SILIP on how we... Um, we need to be providing support across integrated care um, so that people working in social, sorry, social care don't get kind of left between the cracks and out in the wilderness, I think was a, a term that was used. Um, so so that, that was from our group. If anyone thinks I've missed anything, then please shout up. No, that was great, thanks. That's brilliant. Lots of stuff coming through for me. That's really interesting. Thank you, Leslie and, and group. Um, just got a couple of minutes left, so um, I'll go to um, the, it's room five, even though it was room four on my list, but um, that was the room with Annette and Stephen in. Is there anything to add from that group? Yep. Sorry, Matt, as she's again. Um, so, yes, we covered um, with that, um, as Leslie said, we had as well, um, which is a good thing we're sort of on the same page, but we were lucky we had Annette in the group, um, and she's worked for the Social, care, service, social service Knowledge Scotland, mm -hmm. or whether, um, I don't know if Annette's still here, but um, yeah, so she had some, a bit of experience with social care, and she said that what they try to do is to target people that are coming out of university, social workers coming straight out of university, that kind of way. But um, yeah, otherwise we kind of had the same things that have been said before about, you know, um, it's picking your target audience um, and just work profiles. You don't really know what people's work profiles are what the qualifications they have to do, the CPD and things. Um, yeah, and just really uh, about the Open Athens again, it's obviously Leslie mentioned and yeah, very literature minefield. 
Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you would like. Oh, yeah, we sort of mentioned about private, obviously yeah. private organisations, you know, can't have access. Uh, Stephen did a quick search of who's enabled with the, um, who is allowed to use, you know, resources and things. And obviously, uh, yeah, um, certain organisations aren't like public, uh, private hospices and things. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you, Alison. Um, so I, 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 just very quickly, I realise we're, we're running into time, but um, I mean, I think in our group, we talked about a lot, a lot of those themes as well. We're coming through certainly the, the access and just um, physical access to buildings came up with us as well. Um, um, and what we were talking about, and it's sort of echoed in here, I think, is that there's, there's, there's a lot of different experience. You know, some people are already doing social care um, and some people have very little experience at all. Um, so I think there's a bit of work about trying to identify who, who, is, who is already providing these sorts of services so that we can learn from them. Um, and, then, and then maybe it's a bit easier to work out what those needs are from there. Um, we talked a bit about um, next steps as well. And again, the sort of actually identifying where the evidence is and how, how do we make it more available? So, so not, not just um, sort of traditional databases, but also just um, organisations who are publishing reports, just knowing where to go to, to look for them. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that, that there's some... There's some work, I think, in, in identifying, first of all, where people who are involved in this sort of work are, and also a little bit about where to find the, the information. Um, and maybe that, maybe certainly that, as other groups have said, maybe there's some work we can do in, in some in training sessions, on, on maybe more on grey literature, and um, maybe on, on providing sort of different types of summaries as well. Um, I'm really sorry, we have come right up to two o'clock, so I don't want to keep everybody too far beyond time. Um, as I said at the start, this really was a starting point just to, to start to bring people together in a room. And I, th I think it's been really interesting to see, um, you know, the sort of mixture of people coming um, um, and, and hearing about different experiences across the, the country and, and Scotland as well. So um, it would be really useful if people found this useful and would like to carry on the conversation um, Perhaps you could get in touch with with us at HLG, um, and meanwhile, um, the notes I've taken from each of these discussions, I will summarise. I'll do my best synthesis and summarising for you, and put in, and and circulate that with the attendees today. Um, the session has been recorded, so we will be able to go back and have a look at that as well. Um, Thank you again to Sharon for coming along and giving us so much to think about. It's really, really useful to hear about the, the different landscape and, and how we um, start to think about joining it a bit more. So um, thanks again as well for everyone that took part in the discussions and for coming along to the AGM. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lindsay. Stop recording now.